everyone! It has been quite a while since I've done one of these studio-like vlogs, but I have actually had this idea written down as something I wanted to do this year for months now. So today was finally the day that I got around to doing it. And that is going to be I wanted to show you all all of the Christmas ornaments that I have made over the years and still continue to make, but it was definitely something I focused on a lot more a few years ago. I actually ran um, a craft website, which I, it's not like I still don't run it, I just haven't, again, had time to do anything with it. And now I would probably do more YouTube video kind of thing instead of a blog post on how to do this stuff. Uh, but I do actually have uh, quite a few ornaments uh, that I have made um, from doing that as well as other things. So I kind of thought it would be interesting because, you know, they're like painted, like there are other types of artwork. So I, I thought you might like to see that, but also to show you because 95% of these, I would say, have tutorials on how to make them if you want to make them as well. Yeah, there's like lots of like fan arty ones, like there's a lot of Studio Ghibli ones, Zelda ones, other nintendo -y ones. So I guess we'll just get right into actually going through all of these ornaments beside me and finally decorating that tree. <laughs> So I actually keep all of these ornaments in their own separate box, and they're actually in two boxes, as you can see. This one is very obviously labeled paper light box ornaments, so I think we're going to go through this first. I just wanted to kind of mention that it has been a while since I've gone through these, and you know, ornaments break over time and the weird stuff happens, and I can already see one in the bottom of that one that looks a little iffy. Uh, so you know, if I find something and it's broken... <laughs> Uh, it's not my fault, I guess? <laughs> so, this first one is actually an ornament based on um, a unique light box that I made. So this is like the smaller version of it and I just kind of created the template from the photos that I had of the light box. Um, because this one is actually one of the only light boxes available like that I've done that doesn't have a template that you guys can make. Uh, mainly because it was done on it with colored cardstock and then I actually drew on it. So that is that one. It's um, a fan art of Defiance, which if you've been around you've probably heard me talk about that show way too much, but I used to do a ton of Defiance art and I still kind of do and you should watch the show even though it's over now. <laughs> then of course we have a Nightmare Before Christmas little ornament, of course, because all of these light boxes are white, you're not going to be able to see anything too well, and I don't have my phone with me to shine a light through the back, but these white light boxes and all of the paper light boxes look really cool on the tree because the lights from the Christmas tree, like, shine through them, so it lights them up perfectly. Um, but yeah, that's the Nightmare Before Christmas one. There is also a Spirited Away one, which is my all-time favorite movie, so I of course had to make a template of that, and like I said before, all of these, and I'm pretty sure there are even more um, lightbox ornaments, are on the website, which the entire site will be linked below, and you can like search on there for any of the ornaments that you might be interested in making. Or, you know, you can, <laughs> if there is a specific ornament you're interested in, just uh, leave the time code or like describe it in the comments and I'll find you the uh, blog post on it. We have a King of Red Lions light box. And then as a little weirdish one, a Girl with a Dragon Tattoo light box because I am obsessed with the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the whole Millennium Trilogy, Elizabeth Salander, all of that stuff. So I had to make a Girl with a Dragon Tattoo light box to go on the tree. And this, I'm sure you can tell, isn't actually a light box, but it is paper, so that's probably why it was in there, just to protect it more. But it is the Haku Spiral Ornament, which was definitely one of the most popular ornaments on the site. It still is one of the most popular ones. I constantly see this being featured in blog posts and stuff that websites make about, like, the best ornaments <laughs> to make yourself or online or whatever. Um, but yeah, I love this guy. He is really easy to make and the effect is super cool. Mine should be like spiraled out more but he's been sitting in here for at least a year. Actually I think it might be more than a year. I don't think I put these out last year. But yes, the Haku little spiral ornament. 
Now on to the giant box. Now the only ones that I know for sure are not in here and also weren't included in that are the Star Wars Rebel ornaments and the other light box ornaments which both of them have YouTube videos so I will link those below if you're interested in that but I know for sure that is the only ones not included in both of those. So this first thing on top is the Mario Star Tree Topper, which is a paper craft. Um, just thought, you know, it was a cool little nerdy thing to have a Mario Star as your Christmas, like, tree star. So there is that. Of course, these are all, like, wrapped up. Probably should have unwrapped these before I started filming. We have a Warehouse 13 Farnsworth, which I had it that you could add whatever picture you wanted, even if it was like yourself or a family member. Um, I just have um, Helena in there right now. This will go to this guy. This guy I really like as well. It is Turnip Head from Howl's Moving Castle, which is just a normal um, like Christmas ball ornament that is painted and then you make the foam hat and bow and yeah, he's obviously quite large, but I really loved how this guy turned out and he always looks really cool on the tree. <laughs> of course, Let's just get the dragon tattoo ornaments out of the way, which is weird. If you've seen the American Girl with the Dragon Tattoo movie, you will know that Lisbeth had a razor blade necklace, which looks exactly like this. It's obviously just with a shrunken chain and an oversized razor blade. So that is the explanation for that slightly unusual ornament. And then we have <laughs> another one. This is the girl who played with fire. That's her face paint job from the Swedish um, movie. Then we have some paper crafts here. We have a Majora's Mask ornament, which I believe is the downsized version of my life-size Majora's Mask. Um, but yeah, another super cool paper craft. Another paper craft is this Hylian Shield. Both of these are like really easy paper crafts. I think they're they're definitely less than 10 pieces. So if even if you're not like super um feel super comfortable with paper crafts, these ones are super easy to make as like starter ones if you've never done that before. We have a Captain Toad ornament. Now when I was running Otaku Crafts, um like more up to date. We used to make ornaments for like upcoming games and would release them like in time with that. So when Captain Toad came out, we made a Captain Toad ornament. So that is this guy. He's felt super squishy and yeah, super cute. Oh, I forgot about this. <laughs> this was another like topical ornament. This is uh, the Hotel Cortez key from American Horror Story Hotel. Yeah, I completely forgot I did this. I really, really love how this turned out though. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just thin cardboard is like this part and then I just found a key at Michael's and chained that on there. But yeah, I really lo remember loving how this turned out. So yeah, I completely forgot about that. This is one of the very few in here that doesn't actually have a tutorial. I did this when I was probably 12, 13, and I still really like how it turned out. There's another non-hat one down here, and ooh, no, these are sticky. That's not a good sign. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I really loved how these turned out, um, so they still stay in, like, the current, uh, like, all these ornaments that I've made, um, even though they are really old. Um, so unfortunately they don't have tutorials, but they are essentially, they're just model magic. So, you know, make a ball in model magic and like squish some eyes in and paint it and you've got yourself a Jack Skellington head if you want the normal one or the more festive one. On to the next layer of ornaments, as I'm sure you can probably see from all of these. Most of them are Pokemon related, and that is because there was like a mass tutorial of how to create these really easy Pokemon head ornaments. So they are just clear painted Christmas ornaments uh, with, depending on what Pokemon it is, uh, like ears. Here's a Squirtle that doesn't have any... Um, 
extra pieces. Um, but yeah, they're just filled with colored tissue paper or colored cardstock. And yeah, I really, really love these. They did go quite viral when I first posted them. Uh, so you might have already actually seen these. Uh, but yeah, they are the Pokemon ornaments. So I just ended up doing a whole bunch uh, like the standard guys and then some of my favorites as uh, demos for the tutorial. So we've got Squirtle, Bulbasaur, of course, you can't do Pokemon ornament tutorial without a Pikachu. His ears are foam. A Meowth, because you can't do a Pikachu without a Meowth. Come on, Meowth doesn't get enough love. <laughs> and his little pieces, like his little whiskers, and I guess they're whiskers too, and his ornament are paper, but his ears are foam. A Charmander, because I did the original starters. And then for something different, I did a Mew just because I thought it'd be super cute um, and also very easy because it's just a couple of ears. And then my absolute favorite Pokemon, Lugia. So obviously this one's a bit different because the eyes are actually painted on the foam pieces and not on the ball. But yeah, I've always been really obsessed with Lugia, so I had to make one of those as well. And these two are actually... Um, just balls as well. So this is obviously the Pokeball ornament, which again is just a normal Christmas ball that's been painted, and then this is uh, felt, but you could use foam paper or whatever um, to make the band and the clasp thing. Pokeballs are really easy ornaments to make if you're super into Pokemon. And then another one that went kind of crazy when I first posted it was the Navi Ball because, as I'm sure you can tell, it's ridiculously easy, but of course they've never made Navi ornaments, so people kind of lost their minds when I first posted this. Again, just a blue painted ball with some white foam wings, and yeah, everyone lost their minds. This one is the Felt Calcifer, so a little different than your standard, like, um, ball ornament, but still super cute and easy to make. On to the next layer, which is a lot of flat sculpted stuff. Uh, let's go with this guy because he's on top and kind of stuck to that. This obviously is an 8-bit um, Link ornament from The Legend of Zelda. 8-bit ornaments, again, are really easy to make and paint because they are, you know, pretty, like, temp easy to template out because they're, like, not shading, like, they're flat colors and flat shapes. So he, I'm pretty sure, is model magic. He might be air dry Fimo. All of these, any of, like, the sculpted ones are either, are some sort of air dry clay. Um, just because they keep super light, I think he might be air dry Fimo because I started using that, um, instead of model magic because it's a little more dense and not as fluffy so you can cut out, whoops, shapes easier. Yeah, we got 8-bit Link. These two, again, <laughs> with the girl with the dragon tattoo theme, we have, uh, these are definitely model magic. Silhouettes of their faces. So this is Numi Rapace's uh, silhouette, and this is Rooney Mars from the American Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. So that is the explanation for those ones. This one is another Defiance ornament. It is the Lawkeeper badge, which... Kind of feels like it's Fimo and not Model Magic, but again, like I said, all of the sculpted ones are air dry clay. I really am not into fancy sculpted stuff, so if you like any of these sculpted ones, they're very easy to make. This one I really always loved, and it was like another thematic release, and it is the Link Between Worlds um, little like promo picture thing because in that Zelda game you are like going flat against the wall. Um, and that was, this was kind of like the main image they would always use, so I decided to recreate it as an ornament. Let's see, another sculpted one here is the forest spirit in his like knight form from Princess Mononoke. This one is a little more of an advanced uh, paint job, but I do go through with how you can get this effect because when you know how to do it, it really isn't that complicated. But obviously, seeing this finished, it might be a little daunting. But yeah, I always have loved how this guy turned out as well. Let's do this one and this one, because they're kind of 
related. So these are both Warehouse 13 ornaments. This is the grappling hook, which of course has to have a post-it note at the bottom of it. And kind of related to that, you have this one, which is Micah and Helena using the grappling hook. So you hang this on the tree. It has a ridiculously long cord to give that effect. But yes, the grappling hook is still one of my favorite ornaments um, that I've ever made. Um, it's hilarious. When you Google um, H.G. Wells' grappling hook now, this is literally like the second result on Google. So anytime I'm trying to find something related to this grappling hook, it's only my stuff that comes up <laughs> and it kind of drives me insane, but it's also really cool. Uh, but I am planning on making a life-size version of these hopefully soon, but this is the body is paper, there's a bunch of wire, some foam, and then you have a paper post-it note, of course. So that's what that's made out of. This one's another Defiance one. It is a Doc Ewell golf ball ornament. And if you've seen Defiance, you know that they kind of joke that this character looks like a golf ball. So I decided to actually make an ornament using a golf ball. So the head is a golf ball and then her body is just foam with some pipe cleaner arms. This, of course, is the Ocarina of Time ornament. So this one is a really cool customizable one because you can have the music notes here uh, spell out or like show any song that you might like. I'm pretty sure that this is the Song of Time. I just thought that would be a good one to use as like my demo model, but if you're into Zelda, you can definitely customize this one to be whatever song you might want off on this music note side. So these music note uh, like page bar things. Uh, they are wire and then the rest is foam. So as I'm sure you can tell from this level, this is a really a bunch of uh, flat stuff. First one, super easy. I'm pretty sure there's a tutorial on this, but is it is just the Nightmare Before Christmas spider snowflake. Um, so I'm pretty sure I there is a tutorial on this. Uh, so obviously really easy. There's a template. You cut it out. You got yourself a snowflake from the Nightmare Before Christmas. Just have some hooks there. And this one's obviously the, that's just an extra Santa hat. <laughs> this one is obviously mainly the stocking uh, level. So all of these stockings use the same base template, but then you can decorate them to be whatever kind of fandom you're into. So obviously there are a bunch of Studio Ghibli um, stockings. There's Princess Mononoke, No Face, Totoro inspired, Soot Sprite, um, there's a ton. There are a lot more of these than we actually made. Like I made a ton of different templates, but yeah. They're also really cool because we made sure that they would fit a traditional gift card. So if you feel like undertaking something um, craft-wise, you might want to make one of these as a gift card holder, which would be cool. They do hang on the tree and they are all foam. Although some of these details you can actually draw on with like fabric paint. I mean, really you could draw on any of the details with fabric paint. Um, but yeah, it's been awesome seeing people make their own templates for these, just using the base template and then getting creative with the design on the stocking. So they are obviously all the Studio Ghibli ones, but then there were definitely some Zelda ones. This is clearly the only one we physically made. Um, I know that there are more Zelda ones. This one is based off of the shield. Obviously have the Pokeball ornament. We have the Defiance Hellbug and the Warehouse 13 Farnsworth. And then this is the Journey scarf. So I really, really love Journey. Um, the art and just the whole game is beautiful. And so I decided to make this really easy um, ornament inspired by the scarf that the Traveler has. So this is felt and then the designs on these pieces are fabric paint. But yeah, the Journey scarf. And then we just have a flat Nightmare Before Christmas moon with Jack standing on the mountain. Very classic scene. And then these are the things at the beginning that I said, yeah, they're definitely not good. Uh, these uh, were <laughs> Zelda potion bottles. So they had, well, they still do have, they're just 
off to one side and I think they are completely hardened. So I don't think they're going to ever come down off of the side. But they are just small bottles to look like the Zelda potion bottles that have colored glue in them. So that's all it is. It's like cheap Elmer's clear glue that I just dyed, I'm pretty sure with food coloring, but I'd have to check the tutorial. Um, so there's those, and yeah, that that is clearly what like cracked. And then, oh yeah, it's like broken. That's not good. And this one was obviously a fairy bottle from Zelda. You can kind of see the fairy still in there, but the glue has clearly dried out and changed color. The sparkles are gone. Uh, but when this was okay, it did look awesome. So they will unfortunately be going in the garbage. And that is all of the ornaments. I'm gonna put these on the tree and show you how it looks. And here are all the ornaments that I just showed you. Of course, you can't really see them too well because the only light that's on in my room is the tree. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.